Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com. Hello, food fam. This is the Walk and Talk podcast, and I'm your favorite uh, food podcast host. Yes, that's right. I said it. Carl Fiadini. Uh, we're podcasting on site at Ibis Images Studios, where food photography comes alive and I get to eat it. Yes. On the menu today, and thank you, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for today's program. Uh, I thought the sloppy chuck... <laughs> Was going to be my, my baby, you know, going forward. I, I, I really did. That was my number one. But here it is again. <laughs> it's changing. It's constantly changing. Um, enter in the uh, KFP. That is the Korean fried pork. Man, it was nasty. Nasty. What is this? Go, uh, Gogachang yep. sauce? Oh, my God. It's over the... T- it's literally it's over the top. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, guest today. A dear friend of mine, um, he's he's had some adversity as of late. He's battled his way back. He's a restaurateur. He's a cook. He's a dishwasher. A confidant to many. He's been on Iron Chef America, the next Iron Chef, and many other network shows. God has played a role in this man's life in a good way, in a great way. Uh, that is Chef Roberto Trevino. He's up next. Uh, but first. But first. Oh, yeah. It's Chef Jeffrey. It's Chef Jeffrey Jefferson Starship. Um, why don't you get into pre-shift and explain what what the hell you did today? Um, I, had some fun. I, I can't eat anymore. There's food there. There's deliciousness, right? I'm looking. I can see yeah. it from here. Well, yeah, it's basically see it from here. Bro, I can't eat anymore. I'm done. Wow, that's a first. I'm done. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, jump in, baby. What do you got? So we get a pork loin today. <clears throat> we did two styles. Really nice, thick cut. Uh, we did one that was stuffed with Italian influences. It had Meyer lemon, burrata. at colpa. It had uh, carabudo prosciutto de parma, or done on the style of prosciutto de parma. And then we stuffed that in the center, made a little pocket, and then seared that with a little potato starch to give it some extra crunch of the crunch. And then we did that with some accoutrements of uh, smashed uh, little potatoes, like the purple bee, the purple, the bees, and the uh, Yukon golds. And then I did a little broccoliettes and then roasted those off. And then the sandwich you were talking about, the KFP, uh, we did a rendition of the KFC, Korean fried chicken. That Gogu Jang sauce, it's a mixture. So it's black pepper with a little bit of olive oil infused with the Gogu rang which is the powder form and then you take garlic and then you add that and make an emulsification with that oil mixture that you infuse with the black pepper and the gogu rang you infuse that with gogu jang that sauce is probably the dirtiest sauce i've ever made and i don't mean like dirty like sexy dirty pornographic dirty i mean like it's literally dirty it's so bright vibrant red it stains everything but it's so flavorful. Staining my belly. <laughs> yeah. But before you get further into that, because I, I want you to keep going with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the broccoli, the potatoes, everything that, all these side uh, accoutrements, mm-hmm. if you will, when you dip it in that sauce, <laughs> that Goga Jang sauce, oh man, dude, like I, we need to do wings with that. Oh, I, yeah. Because it's so, I mean, it's amazing. Thank you. It's amazing. And, it, I, you know, listen, I, I seem to say that a lot. And I hope everybody, when they're listening to this, they're not like, ah, this guy, Carl. He's... Dude, everything is, like, better than the next. And I'm, it's really like that. 
Anyways, Thanks. so forgive me for the interruption. So we, I wanted to also balance this. So we did some pickled uh, onion, and the pickled onion, I did it kind of like in the Wickles way. I wanted a little bit of spice to it, but I also wanted some acid and to cut it because there's so much between the fat of the pork and the breading and, you know, frying it, quote unquote, because we pan seared it. And then you have, I brought in some coleslaw instead of doing mayonnaise because Silent John doesn't like mayonnaise, mayonnaise. So I did it with just um, uh, honey and lime juice. And let that sit there for the entire time when we were getting prepped and ready. So by the time we hit it and did the sandwich when you got here, I mean, that was just, it was beautiful. The contrast. And then the brioche, you know, toasting it in the cast iron, bringing that butter flavor out. So everything kind of the way the layers flowed together was just gorgeous. And then we have one of my favorites. Good Lord. I couldn't, I can't believe it's taken me this long to get this into this studio. The Compart de Rock. 14 day oh, yeah. dry aged mm-hmm. pork chop. End of story. When you say 14 day dry aged pork, people are like, what? That thing is amazing. And we did one style we did, again, paying homage to Keith Saracen and have t- tutoring me and teaching me about the Indian subcontinent and cuisine. It's called achar, which is their type of pickle. Achari is when you take it and then you rub or glaze something. And that's exactly what we did. We used white lemon and garlic. And then uh, we then did, that was me. (laughs) We have the um, Stokes purple sweet potato that I pureed up. And then we did that with um, the green bean honey almondine. Wow. Instead of just green beans almondine. Um, I never thought that was going to be that good. I I was like, wow. Because, you know, when you chop up the almonds and infuse it into the oil, the beans actually tasted like almonds, which was really great. And then we paid homage to French cuisine because, you know, uh, most of us that went to culinary school were French trained. So a croque monsieur, which is bechamel, ham, Swiss. Um, I got rid of the bechamel. I wanted to add something different. I want to put my own spin on it. Uh, I made John's a little bit hungover from the <laughs> cherries he tried earlier. <laughs> I did drunken fermented cherries with bourbon. And uh, we put that on there with some jalapenos that I pickled as well. And then we did the pork and just seared that and then sliced that and put it with Gruyere cheese and then put it on a, a garlic sourdough. That was just, yeah. So I don't think you tried that. No. Do you know how? <laughs> well, you, you got to wait, wait. One more. And there's that one more. Yeah, you guys taste it today. No, wait. Hold on. Hold on. There's a beautiful, gorgeous, open face sandwich yeah. sitting right there, yeah. three yards from me. Yeah, that's John's dinner. I guess so. I I, well, I gotta get. I gotta take half of that home. I'm sorry. No, 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 yeah. no. You had a full sandwich almost. No, no, I didn't. You had chocolate cake. I had a lot of stuff, but a chocolate cake is the sandwich. Okay, <laughs> like, let's, let's, can we let's be real here? Well, you you, you definitely have to describe the chocolate cake though. The flourless the, chocolate cake, it, noble citrus, yes, tangerines um, infused with Grand Marnier, smoked sea salt, chipotle um, spice. So it had uh, different layers. And then Silent John over there decided to um, do a little marshmallow that he kind of took a torch to, and he's he was in hog heaven at that point. Yeah. I think that was his favorite. That's true. As I, his eyes just bounced up, and or his eyebrows just jumped up and down. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even hop up to go and get on that train. <laughs> no, either. you didn't. I think you're full. I'm telling you. That's what, that's what I'm trying Which, to tell you. This is something happened here. We what? need to either call 911 or, or Guinness. Because <laughs> he stopped eating. Psychologist. <laughs> I, we need to, they need to do a brain study, see what's going on here. Um, all right, so what was the last dish? The, the, the croque monsieur was, well, technically the chocolate flourless cake was okay, that's the what, last right, dish. That's what you were, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, John. Don't just look. I mean, say hello. Say hi to everybody. I mean, he, he, he's going to turn his... <clears throat> hello. Oh, well, there he is. <laughs> wow, it's Whoa, been how many episodes hey. before we actually actually heard him? Wow, that's great. Um, I like it that way. How about the... But dude, that sandwich. Like, you were a little skeptical. I know you were skeptical. It on the, amazing. Right? Uh, you were skeptical because it was a little... It was on the, uh, it was on the, uh, the heat. Mm-hmm. Right? But not, not, not overpowering. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. It was a back heat. Yeah, and and that and that's you can actually change the heat level by you know taking out the black pepper. You yeah, don't it, have to use as much. It had a, a a buffalo flavor, but not. Yeah, it had this Asian. It had an Asian influence, but kind of buffalo. Yeah, and and that's that's the key to it. Um, it's kind of infusing, like when you heat the oil, you're speeding up the process. You know, when you go to Publix and say like. You know, uh, rosemary infused oil. They let that sit in in that in 
or they do other things to it. When you heat the oil, you're infusing oil. Hundred percent. We got to try that with some wings. Uh, I think I know a place that we could get wings from. <laughs> by the way, I mean, <laughs> we haven't you. shot chicken wings. By the way, no, we really haven't. And uh, yeah, again, hey, Peninsula, really that Duroc, stupid. Like, wow. And you know what's funny? As soon as we walked in, I know one of the the guys that there that wor- works for Compart Duroc. What I love about Compart Duroc for chef for us is that it is it's vertical farming. And what I mean by that, or, or upcycling is another word we're using. They actually raise the animals. They raise the feed for the animals. They, you know, harvest the animals there. They don't go out to like, you know, some of these big conglomerates where they have several different contractors out there in farms that are doing things because it's, that's not the way to farm. They're farming things. And here's the thing about them when you look at a commodity and they're doing an ultrasound and looking at the marbling, cause they don't have a grading system for pork. So when they're looking at that um, grading for commodity pork, which is what you get in any supermarket, you're looking at maybe a two to three. When you get to compact or rock, and this is a couple of years ago, they were grading at five to six. They had a sow at the point that graded an eight. That's like on the level of Wagyu or Kobe beef. So for them, they, they've got it down to a system where they're feeding these animals some really great product because they're growing that product for the animals. So their end result is getting a great product. There's more competition out there for the barbecue competition people that are winning because they're using Compact or Rock. And we're not getting paid for that, by the way. That's just my personal feeling because that that is just uh, delicious. I can eat that pork chop once a week. And you and you get that. It's it's 14 days. You get a little bit of that nice aged on it. That, Nuttiness. Yeah. Not not as nuttiness as you would get on, um, and it's funny because some of the pork farmers down here, I mentioned about the fourteen dry age from Compart, and they're like, "You can dry age pork." Huh. Um, hello, you can dry age tuna. You know, with the right way of doing things, you can dry age pretty much anything because that's what we used to do when we didn't have refrigeration. Yeah. So true story. Yeah, and smoked and dry aged and <sighs> aged whatever. Yeah. yeah. Speaking about smoke, how was that brisket there, buddy? Best brisket I ever made. It was so good. <laughs> Look at that did you smile. See, did, so you see the, did you see the pictures? I saw the pictures. I, I, he said, do not leave without getting some brisket. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, d- do not let me leave without the, the brisket. It was so good. I know. You, when you showed the, the video, when you were squeezing it and the juices were just... Get that. Get that. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Tillman on that one. Yeah. He gave me the, the tips. Wait, how long has he been competing, Tillman? That's another person we need to get on. He, he, we he's coming on. He's coming on in uh, January. Good. He no, definitely needs to because that's Carl's just going to shut up in the corner and I'll talk with Tillman. <laughs> I, I'm just going to listen. I, actually, he should come here and bring brisket, bring food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm. You know what? That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to cook that. Day. You know, it's a long drive. Yeah, it is. It's okay. Hey, listen, Amy Yee did it. If Amy can do it, he's know. got he's got a a, a built in. Uh, Hotel, right? Doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, recover? Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. That's expensive. expensive. Yeah, well, I know. Maybe it's really the gas. Built in a, oh, like a food truck? Or something? No, no. He's got a bus. What? He's yeah. got that. Oh, the, you were the, there. The I didn't yeah, see yeah. it. He's never, he's never seen him no, compete? No, he hasn't. No. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's got gonna, like a. So I'm going to film him in, at the Lakeland Pig Fest. When's Pig Fest? In a... I got to put it down on my calendar. Yeah, I'll let you know. What was the one where you just went to? Pig Jam. There's that too many plant, pigs. That was Plant City. There's <laughs> too many pig jam, and then, pig uh, fest. When, the, when he is on the show, he's going to be in St. Augustine. I forget what that one's called. Pig something? <laughs> it's not, actually. I forget what it's called. We need to get JP on the, on the phone, too. That's another one that would be good. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, speaking of get on the phone. All right, so let, let's actually get um, Chef Roberto Tavino on the line. Chef, how are you, man? Attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. All 
Oh man, I am awesome. I cannot complain. And just listening about to those sandwiches, man, I am starving. You know, the, the dry aged pork, the go go dancer, all that business is all me. I love it. <laughs> That's a great name for the sandwich. Go go dancer. Go-go Thank dancer. you, Chef. Yeah. Forget the go go Jen. Yeah, go go dancer. That works. I love it. Um, I all, right, all right. So listen, man, you have a <sighs> chef. You have a very unique um, history. A very unique life. Am I right? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's a cook's life for sure. You know, I, I'd have to say it's definitely a cook's life. And, and as every cook out there, and I know you have a lot of fans that listen that are in the biz, they know that, you know, the culinary life is a rough life. You know, you can either hit the bottle hard or hit the hours hard and you hit life hard, you play hard, you work hard. I did it all, you know, and uh, yeah, it, 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 it had, you had to pay the price at one point in my life, you know, and it came and, it, and it, I had to pay the piper. So, and, and I kind of, you know, we talked about it off air and we've talked about it actually for a while now. Um, right. I, I really want the audience to, um, to kind of understand, like you, you, um, you're a restaurateur at heart. Um, you, in fact, you, ha- you know, we'll get into it, but you have some, some good things coming up here soon on that front. Oh yeah. But you, um, you, you had some, you had some challenges, uh, over this last year and well, yeah, you know, yeah, it just, you know, again, you know, I, I think, uh, it's a culinary life, you know, I mean, I, I started at a very young age in the kitchen and, uh, I, I fell in absolute love with the kitchen from a very early age. So I've been cooking my whole life and, uh, and it's been very, I've been very fortunate. You know, I would have to say I am the lucky cook. You know, you can say that there's, you know, tons of cooks that do well and a lot of chefs that do extremely well. And I'm one of those guys who was lucky, you know, and, um, you know, having uh, a lot of restaurants in Puerto Rico, like about, about 12 different restaurants over the years and, uh, you know, completely scratch kitchen, you know, from the, you know, complete concept creation and and you call me a restaurateur but i have to say i'm a chef first you know i i i I have a saying that says you know a chef works his whole life you know uh so he can have a restaurant he has a restaurant so he can own a bar and uh the truth (laughs) of the matter is you know the truth is i am a chef first and um but having lived that really hard chef life you know i ended up uh being diagnosed with stage four uh uh renal cell carcinoma which is cancer and that was heartbreaking for me because, you know, you live your life. You love your life. You know, being a, a kitchen guy, you know, you love your staff. You love the whole restaurant experience, your guests that coming up with great dishes like your chef there's do, does. And it's just it's just a magical profession. And being told I was pretty much not going to survive because I had a pretty advanced case of cancer and it metastasized different parts of my body. Um, you know, I was a goner and it was very sad. I, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a lover of life. Let's be realistic, you know, and who isn't right. I mean, when you're told that, you know, you, so it's a, it's a, it's a reality check. And, uh, I really had to stop cooking. I was actually doing some, some consulting at this point, you know, in my career, I wasn't opening restaurants and I was just doing the consulting and basically had to stop. And had to slow everything way down and, and, and come to grips with the reality of uh, slowly but surely kicking the bucket. And, um, you know, I did that for a long time. I got to the point where I couldn't even walk, you know. So, you know, like you said, God played a huge role in my life and uh, decided that I would get another break. And I started getting some great treatment um, there in Orlando at Advent Health, which, um, again, extraordinarily talented doctors who uh, who put me on some immunotherapy, which is kind of a revolutionary um, therapy, you know, and uh, it worked. And right now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not cancer free, but I'm cancer less, you know, and, uh, and I'm thinking I'm a survivor at this point. And I think it goes hand in hand with being a chef, you know, and uh, you know, because, as a chef, you go through hard times sometimes. You know, you I've opened and closed restaurants. I've seen it all. You know, I've, the good, the bad, and the ugly in the restaurant business. And the cancer certainly added a little more ugly to it. But the beauty of it all is, you know, the day I stepped back into the kitchen, I opened two restaurants in Oviedo for a group. 
And it was actually the first time I stepped back into the kitchen after my real strong, heavy-duty illness when I started coming back and I said, I can do this again. And I remember that moment when I started cooking again and it literally, my ears, I mean, my eyes welled up with tears and, you know, I'm not an emotional guy, you know, I'm kind of old schoolish that way. But I felt this incredible, like, just this feeling of gratitude and how wonderful it is to be back in the kitchen. And I knew that I was back, you know, and I opened those two restaurants and they're doing well. And, uh, and I feel like, uh, you know, I'm ready to do it all again, you know, and I've, and I've had multiple restaurants, you know, where I was the chef of restaurants and I had like maybe five at once and was operating all of them and had tons of sous chefs and cooks and really worked at motivating them to be excellent, to be amazing. And they've gone on to great things. I'm happy to say, very proud to say, running some of the best kitchens in America, opening their own restaurants, opening their own food trucks, whatever the case, but fulfilling their, their desire to be the chef. And uh, so I, I just feel like right now I'm back, you know, I'm back in the kitchen. I'm back to creating menus. I'm, I'm, just back you know and that's a huge place to be all of a sudden from like being a year ago you know kind of like getting ready to say goodbye to the world and thinking i'll never be in the kitchen and then kitchen to me was my world it was my absolute everything i love the kitchen i remember the first day i went in the kitchen i said this is magic so it was tough but i'm back and i feel great you know yeah chef let me ask you a question like when you stepped out yes. and you had to take that break what was that to your psyche? And then to add to that question, what did it feel like coming back in to your psyche? Did you feel whole again? Like, did you feel human again? Well, yeah, no, definitely, man. I tell you, there's, a, there's, you know, certainly when you are out of the kitchen and you really can't go back, you know, you're thinking this is it. You know, you love you, you lose being the chef because I'm Rob, I'm Roberto Trevino all my life. You know, I'm Bobby Trevino and that's what it is. And, but there's a point where you become just the chef and you are the chef to your staff and your, the, your guests call you chef and everyone calls you chef. And I, I was so sad that I was no longer the chef, you know, it was such a big empty feeling that honestly, I, I, you know, cancer and death were on the forefront on just, just everything for me at that point. And not being the chef was the biggest heartbreak, you know, and the, the other biggest heartbreak was like leaving my dogs behind because I love them to death. So, <laughs> but um, in my family, I mean, that goes without saying, um, but definitely I, I felt like that was it, you know, to not be the chef anymore was to not be me. And that was huge. And that was heartbreaking. And to be able to come back, to be able to be in the kitchen and be fast. Cause I'm a good cook, man. I'm 53 years old. Actually, I'm 54. Sorry. He's got me by. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, I missed the year. All right. But uh, I'm, I'm fast. I'm, I'm still a good cook. And I've always, you know, I opened a lot of restaurants, but I never wanted to be that restaurant owner. I wanted to be the chef. And people would say like, Oh, well, you know, you're the owner. What are you doing working so much? And it's like, because I'm the chef and the chef works. And that's what drives me. I mean, I opened restaurants to be the and became the owner so I could continue to spend my, all the time I bloody wanted in the kitchen, you know. So coming back to being the chef, having the opportunity to open restaurants again. And uh, I got a few in online right now here. I'm actually in Roswell, Georgia, which is just about 30 or 40 minutes out of Atlanta to the north. It's a spectacular food forward community. So I'm going to open a restaurant here in Woodstock, which is another 20 minutes, maybe to the north of here, which again is a beautiful community. It's right on Main Street, America, all the way. You know, I love that. But I'm going to open a really, see, do I want to say family style or a higher end, but something very chef driven Mexican restaurant because I believe Woodstock in particular may need it, you know, um, and Mexican food has become such a huge player in the American food scene. You know, I think it's become, you know, what is 
in our youth, what was uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, and apple pie? Remember the old commercial? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I think now it's tacos, chimichangas, and uh, birria. You know, so Roberto, I you know, it's them- it's funny that you you brought Mexican food up because mm-hmm. you turned me on to a place uh, called Azteca that you were you were close with uh, over there in right. Lake Nona. And they opened up a location here in uh, on the Lakeland side, you know, closer to Tampa. So we go there constantly, and it's one of the best Mexican restaurants around. Where is that? Because I've seen yeah. it. Is that like it's right? Azteca de Oro. When I go, yeah, oh, okay. Azteca de Oro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, I, yeah. I mean, Mexican all day. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Mexican all day long. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. I, I think I the, the three cuisines that are out there that are probably the most popular is Italian, Chinese, and Italian, and Mexican. It goes like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. see, see, I've had I've had uh, chefs cooking, mm-hmm. Roberto's cooking, and and he can throw down. Well, like duh. he's serious. Like it's well, it's not a like no. No, he talk. was an Iron Chef. Listen to me. People always say, well, "Oh, he can." This guy or that girl, the gal, whatever they can cook. But this cat is serious. Okay, and I know that I I'm always very pro. Uh, positive on on things or people, but I only talk about things or people that I believe in. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't right. I don't bring up the negative stuff because I don't talk about it because it's not worth anybody's time. You know, we're not that group, and this isn't that kind of show. So we do focus on the positive stuff. And I will tell you that this guy is a dynamo. Um, and I'm ex- oh, I thank you. No, it's I the like truth. That. It's the truth. <laughs> I, I'm not giving you. I'm not. I'm not giving you the stroke here. It's, He's not blowing smoke. Yeah, this is the truth. You know, I, and I'm, I'm thrilled that, you know, I saw you when you were kind of in the, in your, um, in your, in your, when you were down and then we, we just had breakfast a week or so ago together and you look great. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're on this, um, this, 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 this comeback. And I'm, and I'm really happy to hear how you talk too, because the way that you speak, you know, you're in a, you're in a whole different place. Like you, you saw the, you know, you saw your end and when yeah, when you see that it changes you right so and i sure and it's it, yeah and it's a, and for me as a, a outsider seeing your progression and your before uh, to now it's pretty amazing so i mean really god bless you and uh, whatever you're doing I, you. I hope it you're wildly successful yeah you know, chef i have to ask this question too um my mom yes. had stage 4 lymphoma um, she was pretty oh, wow. much run up, run written off as well. She fought it, beat it. <clears throat> and beautiful. God bless. Yeah. And, and one of the things I, I said to my mom, I'm like, listen, if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But one of the benefits and most people don't realize this to having cancer, I guess this is more a statement I'm, or maybe you can tell me what you, how you feel about it is that cancer gives us the time to say what we need to say to that loved one. You know, you're not driving down the highway and God forbid, you're taken out right then and there and you don't have that time. You don't have the oh, time. Yeah. And as chefs, this is, I guess, one of the reasons why I asked that question to you about coming back. Do you feel like when you took that time to heal your body, your mind, your soul and get better, did you watch the wind? Did you watch things grow? Did you, How did you look at things and how did you perceive life now coming out of being the quote unquote survivor that you are? Well, I mean, you know, perception of life is, uh, you know, I, I think once again, I, I have a defi- definitely a bigger outlook on what not to do as a reckless chef, you know, which I was for many years. As successful as I think I was, you know, I was incredibly reckless and would pound alcohol and, you know, the rest. There's um, coming out of it, I, I feel like I'm a lot more focused. I feel like success is really much more attainable. It's not something like you'll get to by chance. You know, as a young chef, you know, will you get noticed? Will your food be enough? Will the restaurant be successful? I think now being a survivor of cancer, being a survivor and having life, I think my outlook is a far more realistic approach to the business, to food, to my cooks, to the whole package. And I think that it's going to be an interesting and a big plus in in my future endeavors as a chef. You know, I know that it worked while I was opening these restaurants in Oviedo. Um, I had a completely different approach to my cooks and I was always very tough. I'll be honest. You know, I've had a reputation for being an asshole sometimes, you know, and, uh, 
And that's just not going to happen anymore. And I think that's hugely right and the way it should be. You know, I think that it should be a pleasant and happy place to work. And you should be able to truly not only push your cooks to be excellent, but really inspire them to to live life and to enjoy the moment. You Do you, know? and will so this change think, your way think, you're cooking, though, as well? I mean, the way you're going to approach <laughs> cooking? Well, I don't know. I always like to be a bit of a maverick when it comes to food. I like to push the envelope. And I think, you know, I think that's just kind of in me naturally. So will I be less of that? I don't think so. I think I'm going to push it and, and go forward and try to be the best chef, you know, and certainly give my guest, you know, the ultimate dining experience. And I think that those are the things that drive a chef, whether or not you you know, whatever the case, you're a young maverick or you're an old seasoned chef. I think the drive is always the same. You know, you just want to wow your guests and wow your cooks and you want to wow yourself. You know, I mean, I'm listening to your sandwiches and you're describing them and there's a wow to it all, you know, and I love that. Thank you. That's real. That's what drives us. Yeah. And those that I think I will continue to 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 nurture that angle you know, in my life as a chef. So, but uh, definitely the approach in business will be a little more cautious. I think the approach to the future is going to be a little more sound. And I think that's a plus, you know, so whether or not it's age or the cancer that did that, I'm not sure, but I'm with it. I'm down doing a big project in Miami, you know, doing a hotel with three dining establishments in the hotel doing the restaurant here in, in Atlanta, I mean, in the Roswell, Woodstock, and going back to Puerto Rico, where, I mean, I did many restaurants to open something very, very cool in Old San Juan and doing a big beer garden at, um, at a big Ferris where one of those big eyes are building in, in San Juan now. So, yeah, man, I feel like anything's possible. And, uh, and I thank God every day because... It's that simple. Life is is a gift. And, uh, you know, you have to recognize that for you to truly excel in this gift that we've been given on this planet in this short time. Because life is short. Regardless, if you live 100 years, it's nothing when you think about the span of the history, you know? Zero percent I'm, time. I'm, it's nothing. Yeah. We are only dust in the sands of time. Vapor. Yeah, without a doubt. And I, I don't mean to sound so, like, want to be profound or anything. I just... It's just an important message. And I think if, you know, I know you have a huge audience. I know you're doing well with Walk and Talk. But I think if we do have young listeners and young chefs listening, you know, absolutely love the moment. Live it to the max and be all the chef you could possibly be because life is beautiful. Yeah. Amen. And, you know. <laughs> I have a friend of mine who uh, was an addict and cooking actually saved his life. And do you feel the same way as that cooking has saved your life coming back out of cancer and getting back on the, the, the horse per se? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd say it has a huge drive for me to want to survive and to share life more definitely. But I would say it also had a, 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 a huge part of my negative side of my life as well. So, I mean, that's why you have to be sure of every step you take in the kitchen, you know, like you said, your friend was an addict. I would have to say I was somewhat of an addict, you know, for many years. Yeah. But the cooking led to my cooking isn't what, you know, turns people to, um, you know, substance of abuse and no, it's our wiring. We've already talked about it's the wiring. It's, it's It's where the pirates being around others who share the same wiring. Yeah, it's definitely pirates. Right? Well, I, I mean, definitely. listen, we will. Look, we, Chef even said it. We're working god awful hours. Our families, are, you know, everybody in our family is doing something different. We've talked about this. We're trying to find the work life balance. Yeah. How do you find it? And then, you know, Chef, you know, now that you're going to be opening this restaurant, doing all these different things, how, how are you going to find that balance if you're going from, you know, Georgia, the Miami to, or, you know, Florida, wherever you're going to be, San Juan? How do you find the work life balance? You know, I would have to say, and, you know, all chefs will probably say, like, sheesh, dude, really? The kitchen is the life, you know? And to say, like, you know, oh, you know, my family, you know, my kids, my wife, you know, which I don't have. Uh, 
probably easier for me because I don't have that kind of life. I, I really have to hand it to guys, chefs that have children and wives, you know, and they're living that family life. I, I go like, wow, how do you do it? But most of them, I, don't. <laughs> I ask my question in the same way too. <laughs> It's rough, man. It's rough. And I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. You know, I've seen chefs kind of have to put the being the chef on the back burner to be the better father and to be the better husband, you know, and it's acceptable and it's wonderful. Go for it, you know, live that. But uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I think in my particular case, uh, being the chef is my life. And for me to go through all these different places, it's just going to let that legend of being the chef in my mind by the way don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'm a legend it's i'm a legend in my own mind <laughs> Ain't allows that everybody it, is <laughs> allows it to truly be fulfilled you know to be that chef so that one day when the end is in you know my presence i will be able to say like i did it you know i did it i truly did it i was the chef i was the chef's the chef is, is that how you're going about your way now? Are you looking at it being like, how can I leave my legacy now since the, the fight, the battle's still kind of raging, but it's kind of over on the, you're seeing that light. Well, definitely. I tell you what, a lot of my cooks have heard that I was sick and they've been reaching out and I've heard, you know, they've gone on to work with Danielle Blude and they've worked with Wolfgang Puck and they're working, you know, in their own restaurants, like I said, and they're just doing wonderful things and they all thank me. I say to myself, is the legacy there? Is the legacy already, is it a continuation of that legacy? You know, and that's, I think, ultimately, how many cooks can you truly inspire to take the torch forward, to truly live the life, to take your name, you know, and say when they're interviewed by Food and Wine Magazine for being one of the best new chefs, and they say, I started in Chef Trevino's kitchen, you know, and people in New York and different places say, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. That's a beautiful thing. And it's not like, you know, some people would say like, well, they did better than me. On the contrary, they're doing exactly what you wanted them to do way back when. So will I continue to search out those diamonds in the rough? Definitely. Will I continue to inspire young cooks to go on to greatness? Without a doubt, I think in the end, that's what has always driven me and has always made me most happy is to see that and to see the talent, you know, to see the talent, to find the talented young cooks and say, you know, you got what it takes. You're a natural, you know, be that 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 sort of like scout, you know, finding the best players. That's what I like. And I will continue to do that. Well. You, I'm, I'm on the hook here. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a follower. No. He looks like he's got a food coma. <laughs> I do have a food. I, I, I'm Sorry, a chef. Well, I would too. I, I'm in a good place. I, once again, man, I love every time I, I'm on Indeed and I see the pictures of the, of the, of the, of the sandwiches and I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I got to do to get over there and get one of those? I mean, they look delicious. Thank yeah, you. Or, thank you. you know, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm really in a good spot. <laughs> I just took a picture of this. <laughs> I feel good. You know, I'm listening to, well, you got to understand, you have, from my perspective, right? You're, you're as I mentioned uh, in the intro, you've had adversity and you're coming through it. And, you know, you're, you're finding some success now too. Like you're getting your, after, a, you know, going through this, this, this terrible uh, period, you're coming out of it like an, like an animal. I, I, it's a real feel good story. Like, I, I love the story. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled that you physically and mentally are, are coming out of this, obviously. The story is amazing. I just had amazing food. So I'm sitting here listening to you speak about this amazing story <laughs> after I just gorged myself on just stupidly good food. I'm chilling. Yum. Yeah, I would just wish I had yeah. a bourbon right now. <laughs> I, well, you know, I mean, we know somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The funny thing is, it, well, it's not funny. We should actually have, when his schedule permits, we should have him come down and do a craveable, farmer's craveable dinner. 
Oh, hell yeah. Explain that. To, explain that to Chef. So, Chef, what we're doing, basically, we are mental health advocates. We're farmer advocates as well. And we came up with the cool. idea of what better way to shine the spotlight on local farms here in, and we're talking independent farms, in Florida, is to put together the Farmer's Craveable Dinner. And what we're doing is we're going out to the farmers and asking them, what do they have too much of? What is a bumper crop? Or what can't they get rid of? And that's where we're first starting development of the menus. Then what we're doing is wow, we're actually... that's awesome. Thank you. We're actually then going to a farm, a uh, Cahaba Club in specific. January 13th, we're actually doing our first one. And what we're doing is we're showcasing... Right now, I think it's like six or seven different farms. We have nine courses, and it's got has everything included. So tip, you know, the tax and drinks, the food... $133 for the one ticket. The $200 one is the VIP, which is they get like some swag, they get a bag, they get a whole bunch of different stuff inside it as well. They get to nice. go home with. Um, but we want to, here's the thing, what I thought coming out of COVID, and that was one of the questions I want to ask you. One of the things I realized out of COVID in this industry is that we lost the service part of it, but we lost more importantly, the experience and making memories and I think that's one right. of the things we really need as chefs that we can have is to develop those memories again. And what better way to do it by helping farmers and having them showcase their product and their love, their passion and the passion we have. And then here's the other thing, the flip side, we introduce chefs that might not know that right down the street, 13 minutes or 25 minutes or an hour, there's that farmer who's growing that crop or raising those chickens or raising that beef. And that's where we want to right. go with it. I love that. That's cool. So, I mean, you know, definitely. We'd love to have you. Good Lord. That'd be incredible to have you to come when your schedule yeah. permits. And it's got to be oh, yeah, cool outside. For that for sure. <laughs> so like yeah, January 13th. That. that would be a lot of fun. Uh, February. We, we got to do one in February. Uh, take it easy. <laughs> Are you guys going to do them every month? No. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Yes, but no. L yes. Listen, I would throw parties. Totally. Listen to me. Chef. Yes. Once a month. I would I, listen to me. Let me explain this. I would throw parties every week, like if I felt like everyone would come. Like honestly, uh, right. I, I'm not a part. Like I go to the parties. I have fun at the parties. I can be that center on the couch where everybody's. I can do that, but I'm not going to throw the party. I get anxiety. I sweat. Oh like he's, God, you he's, have no idea. Yeah, no. His like real, anxiety I, is. I don't dig it at all. No. But and, and so he, you know, there. In fact, so a couple of weeks ago, I had this nasty <laughs> flu, this horrible <laughs> flu, and um, I was kind of out of it. And um, in the worst part of this the week of the flu, I find out that, uh, hey, by the way, we're going to start doing, uh, you know, farm table dinners. And I'm like, and, and it's scheduled. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I, I shut off my phone. I didn't look at my phone for days. I, I, I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know. Here's the thing. He's, he's never lived in our life where we can put on something and do something really quick and a drop of a dime because that's what we do. And we do it really well. Right. He's never really seen it that oh, way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It isn't what you can execute. I have, I have <laughs> I every know. ounce. It's of, the people getting there. Yeah, it's yeah. the people spending the dough to get there. You know, uh, that's the part. That's the tricky part. You know. Yeah, that's the tricky part. Because we need, you know, listen. Uh, it's good. So we're building a following, right? And the following, the following we have is is in a unique space. We don't exactly have a following for putting on dinners, right? Even though you're an awesome chef and your pedigree is pretty fantastic. Like you, you know, you, you obviously can put it on, you can do it, but they don't know us for that. Right. Right. So, you know, we're, we're trying to like fast track into this lane that the other car, the other cars that are on that lane are going 200 miles an hour. And we're, and we're kind of pulling in at like 75, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's a you're, bit, you just mentioned Miami. hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. It's the HOV with 95. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's, they, it's golden, golden exchange. Correct. So, but, but that's, that's where I'm coming from here. That's my, my thought process. Like I know what we can do it. I know we can execute and I know they will be bad ass. I, you know, but getting the people in, you know, the guests uh, usher in. And that's another story. And how many guests are you looking to feed? I can, we, I don't know. Don't I mean, we can, yeah. we can feed upwards of 80. Yeah. At the farm. At oh, the, the farm, one farm. Yeah. Yeah. Big event. It, it yeah. could be, it could be a huge event or it could just be like the three yeah. of us eating a lot of food, you know, <laughs> which I can handle. I can manage that. I can put it down. Yeah. But you can eat for four. Right? <laughs> I eat for four. <laughs> so I can do it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. I don't mind eating. I know you. I know you can too. 
Well, good food. Yeah. 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 Craveable food, I should say. Ah, I mean, I can, I can mm. do it with Doritos. I can do it with pra- craveable food. I can pretty much put down whatever. Yeah. yeah well, no, I've, I've actually seen it, witnessed it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? You know what? I've become sort of a big fan of, believe it or not, Pringles. Those things are awesome. Pringles are great. Like, yum. Yeah. You uh, that whole little tube of them. You know what's funny? I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop a brand. Um, all right. So we all heard of Cheetos, right? Oh, here he yeah. comes. I well, know which no, one you're going to. They're yeah. Good. So a buddy of ours, uh, a, a new, a new found buddy. Um, he's affiliated with a company called Chiwis. Chiwis was the original Cheetos. Cheetos spun off from Chiwis. That that was the original brand. So. Um, foodie patootie, uh, chef Pooch Rivera out of, um, New Orleans. He, uh, he's affiliated with this, with this company, with this brand. So he sends me a box of, um, I don't know. There must've been like Seaweed. 20. Yeah. But it was like 20 bags, all different ones. I, I ate, a, I ate a all lot of them. Oh no, my kids actually, Damn. cause it's really good. Like they're really, really I, I had them finally when I got to Dallas. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, listen, I brought you the other stuff today. Yeah, I know. I got the thank you, Steve. Yeah. Mr. Scott Green for the dots and yeah, the sauce. Dots that's ketchup and the sauce. Yeah, I brought and, it. And so Chiwis, Chiwis is from Louisiana? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a Louisiana company. Yeah, they had a, we had a jalapeno one that was pretty fire. Jalapeno was, that's my favorite. Oh, what was the other one we had? Yeah, we had well. well, I had them all. So. <laughs> no, but we did it. Remember, we did it in Dallas. We did the uh, um, soft shell crawfish. And we, I think I that was the original. The, yeah, I did a whole mixture of the different ones. They were fantastic. So you guys actually made a dish with it? Yeah, I kind of um pulverized the um product into like a Kiwi, like kiwis. a into like a almost like a flour, if you want to call it. Like almost nice. like a corn flour, cornmeal. And I just dredged yeah. the um soft shell crawfish and sauteed them. Very uh, nice. Wow. They were, I don't know if you've ever had soft shell crawfish, chef, but let me just tell oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Game changer. <sighs> Game oh, changer. Yeah. Uh, I never had them before. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Roberto, I never, I've oh, not yes. had them before. And I literally, I'm, I don't know, I must have had a pound of those things by no, myself. You didn't. We, we, we had seven pounds. Yeah. And I had, I literally, <laughs> I cleared a tray. I know you did. Yeah. I, I was, was cooking them. I know. <laughs> I know. And then once we put that Dats sauce on there, the ketchup? Yeah, that was, that was, <sighs> it's like a ketchup hot sauce uh, combo. Well, and then Ephraim made that. And it's called Dats sauce? D-A-T-S. Yeah, that's a different brand. That's a that's a whole other sauce, but it's... it's. That's also a Louisiana thing, right? Correct. Yeah. It's sounding like Louisiana talk. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone thinks it's because the Dat from, you know, who Dat, it's actually the guy's yeah. initials, if yeah, I'm not mistaken, the story was. was. Yeah. I don't remember the name either. Yeah, Taylor somebody's... was the last name, I think it was, when Scott Green was telling us the story. Right. And basically what it was, it was like almost like a sweet my ploy chili. Um, and they try to replicate this this family member's recipe, but they didn't have it because obviously that person passed away and they're trying to replicate it. And the guy was like, finally, you know what? We're done. We're just this is how we're gonna put it out. Let me tell you something. It's like you might as well just sell it on the Miami street corner as crack, because that's what it is. It was fantastic. Well, I tell you another thing, man. You think about another Louisiana great Avery Island, man, Tabasco. I mean, yep. Yeah. Good Lord. I mean, talk about killer. I mean, and you know what I love about Tabasco is if you let it sit, it seems to get hotter. It's just like like it must evaporate or something. It just gets so hot. When it's dark brown, it's been sitting around forever. That's when Tabasco is real good. You know? Yeah, I this, love that. Yeah, spicier the better. And it's hot. Chef, you like right. uh, what's your what's your heat preference? What uh, like Sierra one to ten? What's your heat preference? No, I go ten all the way. I don't mind hot at all. I do really? habaneros. I make a I make my own habanero hot sauce, and it's just like whew, real hot. I love it. I, I, I on a bet uh, on a bet. Oh. I did this thing. I ate a habanero, and um, oh, it's rough. It was rough. Uh, I I knew what I was getting into. It's not like I was done with it. Um, but I have to tell you. It was 10 minutes of just like agony. It was 10 complete 10 minutes of, of sheer agony. Um, but as soon as that 10 minutes ended, I had the, I had the, like the most clarity in my vision, euphoric. euphoria, uh, like just, yeah, euphoria for sure. I felt amazing for, for yeah, the endorphins that Chili's release are amazing. I, it was. And I said to myself, I remember it vividly. I said, I got to do this once a week, you know, obviously <laughs> not doing that. I didn't touch it. Uh, kind of like an ice bath. 
Yeah. Yeah, those people are crazy. You gotta you gotta read up on butt pucker farms. The guy named Ed Curry. <laughs> no, I, I'm not I, this guy is the one who invented the Carolina Reaper. Butt pucker? Buck pucker. Yeah, butt pucker farms. Because even John heard he, he Oh was, yeah, he, he definitely was shaking he, he, his head over there. Here's the thing. So he originally went to medical school and then got kicked out because he was doing a little bit of the, you know, the four twenty. Yeah. And he was hypothesizing that cancer and the way to get rid of it. He looked around the world to see who had the lowest cancer rates and it was everyone around the equator. So he hypothesized that was capcasium. So he developed the peppers to be cancer fighters. Hmm. And then lo and behold, his largest at the time, uh, his largest uh, customer was the DOD, the department of defense defense. He was, (laughs) he's developed a a pepper that's 5 million Scoville units. Wow. So the Carolina Reaper, to put in perspective, uh, pepper spray from the police is 2.1 million Scoville units. Um, his Carolina Reaper is 2.2 million Scoville units. Naturally occurring is the scorpion pepper from Trinidad, which is 1.5, I think. And I think the ghost pepper is 1.2 million. So what he did was he crossbred, um, gene- not genetically, like he did it through bees and high, um, pollination. Yeah. Cayenne probably, pepper sure. with Carolina Reaper. And that's how he did it. So it's you got to read it. He's Roberto, up in North Carolina. Roberto, you're going to try that pepper? <laughs> I did. Uh, I'll try that pepper. I don't mind. I, I can do heat. I don't mind it one bit. Will, will you do I, it? I love the challenge with the hot pepper. Hold, 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 hold. Chef, will you do it on the show? Yes. We do it on the show with Cameron. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it on the show for sure. Right, but I gotta right. have a big piece of sweet bread, Mexican sweet bread. Next. I'll have milk for you too. I'll, I'll have. I'll get whatever you want. Uh, yeah, for your side on this, you better have some ice okay. cream and ice and all that other stuff too. Man, I've seen people go through some horrible situations eating those peppers and these pepper challenges. You know that I don't know, <laughs> Chef. I got to be honest. I worked for a broadliner and they introduced a ghost pepper cheese and they had dehydrated ghost peppers. And this idiot wow. was like, "Oh, let me go ahead because I eat Scotch bonnets. I'm, I'm married to a Jamaican, so we eat Scotch bonnets like it's like candy." Very nice. So I'm like, yes. I popped this thing in my mouth. It took a little bite, and middle, literally in mid sentence, couldn't talk for five minutes. I was, <laughs> and that's that's it's, that's a miracle. I think you should take a bite of something of that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it, uh, it's deadly. I mean, it's yeah. Well, you can't mess with peppers like that, you know. I mean, it's, I mean, I, there are people who claim to be, be able to eat a lot of hot peppers, but sometimes, I mean, there are peppers out there that can put the hurt on you. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I, learned, yeah half I, Nelson, I, I did my Nelson. habanero. I'm, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're not going to do the one chip challenge? No. <laughs> nope. I'm good. I did. What, listen, I've done it. I did what I had to do there, and um, had my experience, and and that is, as they say, that. All right. Um, chef, how do people find you? What's your, uh, what's your, what's your preferred social uh, media? Instagram chef, Roberto Trevino. Um, LinkedIn's always good. I, I found that LinkedIn has become my more adult beverage. Uh, you they, know, uh, LinkedIn yeah. is bad. At, I love LinkedIn, man. That's the place to be. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. You connect with some great people, you know, especially in the industry. So LinkedIn is great, but yeah, chef Roberto. I gotta go on there and do that. Hold on, wait, wait, chef, what is it? Trevino on Twitter. I know, I know X is not the thing anymore, but it's still good. I'm there. Find me, you know, I'll be there. I'll put your socials in the, in the description, uh, on the podcast. Um, very nice. I'm also a Liverpool fan. You'll never walk alone. Just, just putting it out there. Heard that. Yeah. I'm a trotter. I'm the Spurs. (laughs) Heard that. Really? Yep. Well, well then. All right, that's gonna be that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a topic for another day. Thank God uh, he's not Man City. We're coming up. We're coming up on the uh, on the end. Um, chef, right. sincerely, thank you. my friend. I am. I'm, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your story. A um, lot more to come, my man. Thanks for coming on, John. You're awesome, Jefferson. I mean, you know, you're yeah. okay too. All right, we. Thanks, guys. You're Appreciate welcome. It, chef. All we the best. are out. <laughs> <laughs>